Hello, my name is Mrs. Sprangle, and today I'm going to tell you about a powerful tool called Google Read and Write that you can use for all your classes. Here's a short video to just give you an overview on what Read and Write is. Millions of young people around the world are getting a daily literacy and language boost with Read and Write. And now we've made it even better. Read and Write helps students learn, research, and express themselves more confidently at all grade levels and across all subjects. The friendly toolbar works with web pages, PDF files, Google Docs, and all your classroom documents and existing lesson plans. And with great features like text-to-speech, word prediction, picture dictionaries, audio maker, and study highlighters, it fits right in with today's varied curriculum and teaching strategies. When you've got a classroom full of individuals with their own abilities, challenges, and attitudes to learning, Read and Write gives every student just the right level of personalized support they need. Fluent readers looking to enrich their vocabulary, English language learners, and students who are performing below average in their literacy scores, allowing them to catch up with the rest of the class. Read and Write offers help to all your students. What's more, it includes welcome extra features, which gives students with additional learning needs like dyslexia a little extra support without making them feel any different from their classmates. Read and Write is easy for schools to deploy and use. One license gives full access for every type of device, PCs, Macs, Chromebooks, and tablets. And it's always up to date, with updates being delivered automatically. So support is a breeze for busy IT staff. Sign in and you're good to go, in class, at home, or on the move. So why not give every one of your students a valuable literacy boost with our best ever read and write. District 99 has already downloaded Read and Write to your Chromebook. So you should be able to see this puzzle piece right now. There are also two other recommended downloads, the Screenshot Reader and the Text Help PDF Reader. Those will enable you to be able to use uh, them to read other tools as well. So I will allow you to take the time now to make sure that you have those items downloaded. So right now you can go ahead and see my read and write toolbar up here. However, sometimes it is hidden. Um, so you just need to click on that puzzle piece. Read and write does look different depending on what you're in. So yeah, you know, if I'm in a Google Doc, it looks like this. It may it look shorter when I'm in a um, Google Slide Deck as well as on a website. It just looks different. Before I go into too many details about what each and one of these features do on the toolbar, I am just going to um, take a moment to show you this neat little graphic that we have made into a handout that will be able to provide you as a note and you will be able to save it so that you can look at it later. Bad. So this first one here, um, check it. It's, it's like a spell check and grammar check, but Google Docs has a spell check and grammar check built in now. so. I think that might be better for most students. And all of the things that I'm gonna show you, there's probably a Chrome extension that does these things already, but Google Chrome puts it all in one place and it's all paid for, so it's not like a trial. Prediction is one of the more powerful tools. And what prediction does is um, it, so maybe I can't think of the right word or how to spell the word. Today I uh, woke, uh, it's not even there. Woke. 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 Up. Up. Okay. Woke up. Well, I woke up late. I don't know how to... Oh, there it is. Late. Late. Okay. So what it does is it At tries to predict what word you're trying to type so it can give you the rest of it. Again, Google is kind of catching up with this with that AI that it does now in our emails and in Google Docs also. But this is a feature that and. some students might have been used to with a program called CoWriter. And uh, you can change how many words it gives you for predictions. Um, and was, you know, and then a. It, it tries to predict what words you might use next. Um, 
and then when you start typing, it changes what word you might want to use. And it only gives, it, it's giving me five options. Here. Aerobic, aerospace, aegis. So I can also hit just control and the number. So control three, I want to pick aerospace. Engineering. Um, if I go to these three dots up here, which we'll talk more about these options later, but under prediction here, I can say, you know, I want to see 10 different predictions. So now when I'm typing. Industry. It's going to give me 10 different predictions. For, Independent. Industrial. Okay. So that's um, prediction. You want, you want to say anything about that, Dawn? Um, no, not really. I, I think that it's just the big thing is where it's different than what we have already, like in Google Docs and stuff, is that you have the drop-down box, which some of those kids need that, that visual piece and, a, and a, a, a word bank to choose from. Exactly. So that's a predictor there. Also, what the predictor will do, I guess, um, well, I'll just show you quickly, um, is after, well, no, it doesn't do it. After you're done typing, it typically will read the sentence back to the student. So they can kind of be like, hey, did that actually make sense, what I just typed? So that's the predictor. It looks like a crystal ball up here. I'll turn it off. And again, it's in the slides as to what each one of these do. This is a dictionary. So I'll show you how it works and Don can talk about it. You highlight a word and then you click the dictionary. Um, yeah, so it, it, will, it will give you, you know, right in there what the dictionary is. What I kind of like more is, uh, Nader, if you go over to the, you know, the right um, is the picture dictionary. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, for our students who maybe, oh good, Bristles doesn't have Bristles. any, doesn't <laughs> well, have maybe. any um, toothbrush. It, it will allow, you know, where it will show those students, um, you know, a, a picture of an item. Um, those pictures can actually be used later, you know, for vocabulary um, printout sheets that they can do. But it's nice that if they wanted to see a picture with it, they could do that. Yeah. So that these two buttons, this is to define a word. You highlight it and it'll give you definition. This is a picture dictionary. And then this is just what many students will probably use it for. And even adults is just... Um, play just I want, continents well i had that highlighted so if i have it here what happens on the earth when a moon dies is not easy to describe i'll try to do it by referring to the last instance i can remember okay and so what it'll do is uh i can change it so it reads one sentence at a time one word at a time or it just keeps reading till i hit stop or you could just highlight a couple of sentences and read them like that so that's that feature where you hit play and it reads what happens on the can pause it it's highlighting at the same time um and then i can just stop it and oh, then I think for that and I'm, i'll just chime in is that it's important that it makes you you know your what you're passing out to the kids you know you you kind of have instant audio for but for if your students are doing um writing and it's hard to do maybe necessarily a get up here, you know, check from somebody, they could at least use this for um, when before submitting to make sure that it's making sense to them. Because so many of our kids skip that, you know, final process of actually editing before final submission. Exactly. And uh, here in the options, you can change the speed and also the voice that it reads to you. Um, so students can change that. Um, then I'll quickly show you, so what if you're not using like a Google Doc or even on a, on a website, it works the same way, right? The ancestors of river dolphins. Um, if you're not using all right, we'll work that on PDFs as well. So all you have to do is open it up. And when you go to do it, you're going to hit open and you're going to do it with read write for Google Chrome. It is going to take a moment to process it. Um, however, there are two different types of um, PDFs. Some take a picture. So at this time, I can't highlight anything on here to get it to read. But there is this screenshot reader that I can put my um, put a box around it. And what it's going to do is you can see at the bottom with the colors it's thinking and processing. History is the record of past events. It is the story of people. I'm going to stop it right there. Um, but you can see that this is um, a scan from um, 
one of the printers that are in the building, it made the PDF a um, picture instead, but with this screenshot um, reader, which is this little bird that I downloaded, um, it installed it here and then it made it a readable PDF. Again, there's also, you know, true readable PDFs. I still would open it with the read write for Google Chrome which again is this PDF reader extension that I put up here. You can see it's thinking. However, if I then go and highlight an area and hit play, it will then go ahead and read the PDF as well. So it gives students the opportunities to be able to access those PDFs and turn them um, into audiobooks without having to leave and use a different um, program for it. Um, this here is an audio maker. So let's say uh, I send a long document to students that they have to read um, or students have a long document they have to read. You can highlight whatever you want. It can be pages and pages worth. I've done this with emails before where I've sent an email to a student that's long and then I've just created an audio file that I attach also. So when the student sees the long email, they're just like, oh my God, I can't read all of this. But then they see the audio attachment. That's what happens on the earth when a moon dies is not easy to describe. I'll try to do it by referring to the last instance I can remember. So this is where you can um, maybe attach something along with um, a document so that a student can listen to it. Um, any other uses you can think of with this one, Dawn? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, audio maker. That's what that one's called. Uh, this is web search, but I mean, I don't know. I typically web search by right click and just say like, find it, but it just create, does a Google web search. Okay. This is a screen mask and I'll show you how it's, how it works. And Don, you can talk about it. So for some students, um, I think back where we used to have like the plastic um, rulers that students were able to then highlight what they were doing if they were, um, if they were being too overwhelmed and they need to keep their place online. Um, what this highlighter does is it allows students to be able to keep their place. Um, you can make the highlighter um, bigger. Um, so it, maybe it reads like um, three lines instead of one at a time, but especially for our students who maybe struggle with um, staying in one place, they could then go ahead and then um, just have the line they're currently reading highlighted. So that's a screen masking feature. And this works on a Google Doc or on a website, uh, maybe to help a student keep their place. Um, uh, this is talk and type. So basically what it is, it's exactly that. Um, and Google has this feature too, you know, voice typing, but uh, it also works through Google Read, Read Write. So you click on this talk and type, and I should be able to type anything that I speak, period. So that's usually underlines the words. Well, it's like, did, or did we get this right? And if we didn't, you know, we'll let you know. So it's like, oh, I thought I said anything. Maybe I did. Um, so this is, uh, that's that button. And again, so this is already in, but maybe a student can't find this or they can't dig through the menus to find this in uh, a Google Doc. And this doesn't have to be in just a Google Doc. This talk uh talk and type. I think I had a Google form that was like a mile long that I had to fill out for grad school a couple of months ago and I didn't want to just type it out. So I literally opened up read, write, and then I just went into each like form box and then hit this button and just recorded what I wanted to say. So that's that. And I think sometimes people um, dismiss teaching students how to use voice typing because they don't have an issue um, maybe necessarily with reading or writing, but um, I remember teaching this um, not necessarily through uh, Google Read and Write, but I taught it one time to a student. He's like, I'm never going to use this. And then he ended up breaking his arm in wrestling and uh, wasn't able to type for a month. And he's like, well, what am I going to do now? I'm like, remember that lesson from the beginning of the year? He's like, yeah, I go, here we go. So I think there are just some times um, that our students can maybe, you know, we'll need to tap into these things for maybe not just what we traditionally think, you know, these accessibility tools are for. Exactly. Um, 
So maybe English is not my first language and I'm still kind of an English language learner and I'm like, I don't know what this word aerospace means. I click on these two like arrows here and that's a translator. And then it'll read it to me. Aerospatial. In aerospace. Aerospatial. So I... Toothbrush. Cepillo de dientes. Okay, so how did I pick that? You can choose from a bunch of different languages here. If you go to options and um, language, no, I'm sorry, speech, yeah. Under translation here, it has kind of its top ones that it works the best with, but it literally has tons. And this just works by using the Google Translate engine, again, which some students use, but this is just within, you know, a website or, right, I'm like, uh, what's dolphin? I don't know in, in my native language. Okay, there it is. Delphine. Okay. So that's translator. Okay, this highlighting tool. I'm going to highlight some words. Dawn, you can talk about maybe what some uses might be. So uh, especially when we're thinking about digital text marking, um, they give you the option of four different highlighting tools. So if you want to tell students to highlight, you know, maybe for character in yellow, um, setting in green, maybe conflict in uh, the blue, and so you can highlight it um, as they're going through. This does not create citations like Scribble. However, there is a way that it allows you to pull all your highlights together and it will make a separate Google Doc with that, which uh, Nader will go ahead and show that in a moment. So depending on how many highlights you do, and it will just make a list. Um, for that, and I'm trying to remember Nader too, it does have the ability that if you were doing it where we were able to make that really nice, like almost like vocabulary chart. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's uh, this button right next to it. And this does work on web pages also. And if you make it, it'll give you the web page. Um, it'll cite it at the bottom. So let's give it a second here. Yeah, and here's the vocab. So all the words that we highlighted. Even thinking for science, you know, the old, the old Marzano um, vocabulary notebooks, you'd be able to, you know, have them pick up some simple um, clip art for those words that they were looking for. Exactly. Or you might say, hey, you know, it's going to give you 10 meanings of each word. You're going to delete all of the ones except the one that we need in context. Um, so that's, these are the highlighting features. This erases, this little sweeper erases all the highlights. Uh, that creates um, the highlights separately, grouped together, that creates the vocab. And then this is um, a voice note. So, and there are some, some of you might've used extensions on Chrome that do this already, but um, so maybe I'm, at, you know, looking at a student's paper and it's first draft and I say, great first sentence, um, but try to develop a better hook. And then when the student goes back and I return the paper through classroom or whoever I do it, whatever management system I use for them, uh, they can go back and say, oh, what did Mr. Najjar say about the sentence? Great first sentence, um, but tr And then it's just like any other comment, you know, you can reply to the comment, um, will do, please help, whatever, right? But it's, it's just like a comment, but it's, and you can record up to a minute. So you might be grading or you might be like, you know, it, it's a lot that I want to say and I don't necessarily just want to type it. I want to, I want to tell them about it. So again, I, since I guess you can't conference in person necessarily now, this can kind of maybe give you that in-person feeling. Um, Don, would you use this for any other reason? The voice note? Uh, no, I just, like you said, there's other extensions where people have downloaded to be able to do voice comments and it's nice that it's in a one-stop shop. Exactly. And it shows up as a little play button and, right, this is a, it could be students peer editing, right? And just instead of typing out comments, they can um, just record their voice. So that's pretty much all of the buttons on here. Um, it, one more thing I'll show you with options real quick is if there are some buttons that you don't use or a student doesn't use and they're just you know, it's just overwhelming. It's like, I don't use that check it button because I use spelling and I use Grammarly and I use the spell check through that and through Google. Um, you know, I don't use this picture dictionary and I 
don't use or will not be using at least for the next day or so any of these features. And you, you can see up there actually what it's doing is it's making my toolbar shorter. So then now it's a little bit more maybe manageable where I don't have to be like, wait, which tool was it? You know, there's like 50 buttons. You can reduce it down to just less and less buttons um, to be able to deal with. So that's in the options. And again, all students have this pushed out on their Chrome. You should have it also. Uh, but the screenshot reader and the PDF reader are um, separate extensions that you have to download. So before I finish up this video, I want you to take the time to go into the options and customize it for yourself. Um, find a voice that you think is appealing um, that you want to hear. Um, you know, practice with the reading. Um, you know, there are some, you know, various Australian. Um, there are some in other languages as well. Um, you know, Google English, you know, UK English. So you're going to want to look, and some of these are, are different languages too. Um, so you're going to want to pick someone for that. Um, speed, if, if you feel like they were reading too slowly, you could go ahead and adjust it so that, you know, maybe it's reading a little faster, or maybe you do like it when it's reading a little um, slower as well. Um, if you do speak a different language and you want a translation, then change it to that. Um, as well as your prediction, you know, if you're going to use that feature, you, you have the option anywhere between three to 10. Um, screen masking, you know, how, uh, what size do you want? The features, again, what you can turn on and off um, for that. But the greatest thing is that you have this tool, you will have this tool for the next, um, four or so years that you are here at TGN, so make the most of it because you never know how it's going to help you in your classes. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use the Read and Write for Google Chrome extension in order to have an assessment read aloud to you while the assessment is in a locked mode. The first thing you need to do is find the purple puzzle piece on your extensions toolbar at the top of your screen and click on it in order to open up the Read and Write toolbar. You will see the read and write toolbar has opened at the top of your screen. You must see the read and write toolbar at the top of your screen before you click continue to begin the assessment. You will see that you now have access to the read and write toolbar at the top of your screen um, while you are in the assessment in the locked mode. I'm first going to show you how to have the assessment read aloud to you and then I will go back and show you what the other icons can do and how the other icons um, can provide support. So first, in order to begin having the assessment read aloud, you need to highlight where you would like the assessment uh, reading to begin. So once you highlight, you're going to click the play button. Lab safety exam. Lock mode is on. To avoid losing your progress, complete the full quiz before closing. Required. Last. So you will see that the assessment reads continuously and it does not stop. So you will need to use the pause and the stop features in the toolbar in order to be able to have an opportunity to pause and stop to submit your answers. So for this example, I used the pause feature and I pressed pause so that the um, reading would be paused. And since I pressed the pause feature, you will see that part of the um, assessment is still highlighted showing where I paused the assessment at. In order to continue the reading, I'm going to press pause again to pick up the reading where the reading left off. Name, ID number, your answer. So this time after it read ID number, I pressed the stop feature. So you will notice given that I pressed the stop feature, there is no highlighting on the page. So by stopping, this also gives me an opportunity to submit 
um, the information that is required within the assessment. Given that I clicked the stop button, I now need to tell the program where to begin reading from. So I'm gonna to wanna to start with question one. So I'm going to highlight question one and press play so that the reading can begin. It is necessary to wear safety goggles whenever you are working with chemicals such as acids or bases in the vicinity of volatile materials, working with boiling liquids, all of the above. The best way to prepare for a lab activity. So I just pressed pause so that I can have an opportunity to answer this first question. So I'm going to submit the answer to my first question and then I'm going to go back and press pause again so that I can complete the, qu the second question. It is to ask your lab partner what to do one. If you feel like you missed a part of that question um, because it did not reread the entire question, you can always use the stop feature and then highlight the question and press play. The best way to prepare for a lab activity is to Ask your lab partner what to do once class begins. Look at what other students are doing. Pre-read the lab procedures and follow them step by step. Work by trial and error. So you are gonna to have to play with the pause and the stop feature to see which feature works best for you and which feature you prefer when you are using read and write to read an assessment aloud. At this point, I have showed you how to read the assessment aloud, so if that is all you are looking to do, you can exit the video and thank you for watching. However, if you would like to learn more about the icons in the toolbar and how you can use those, please keep watching as I will show you now. This first icon here is a word prediction software. So how that works, if you have to complete a short answer portion of an assessment and you want to use word prediction, you click on it, and then as you start typing, it predicts words based upon what you are typing Happy. in the box. So you do have accessibility to the word prediction um, feature if you would like to use that for a short answer portion of an assessment. Once you are done using it, you do have to click it a second time in order to turn it off. The second feature is hover speech. If you click on hover speech, as soon as you put your cursor over a phrase of words, it will start reading for you. For example, It is necessary to wear safety goggles whenever you are. So that is another way that you can have the assessment read aloud if that is a preference for you. This book icon is a dictionary and this is a picture dictionary. Obviously we talked about the play, the pause, and the stop button. This button is a screen masking feature. And so when you set the screen masking feature, you will see that it highlights portions of the text at a time based upon how you scroll with your mouse and your cursor. So if you only like to see bits and pieces of an assessment highlighted at a time, you can use the screen masking feature. Again, when you are done, you do need to click it off. This little headset microphone here is a um, talk to type feature. So again, if you have a short answer uh, portion of the assessment that you need to complete, you can put this on and then you can just verbally state your answer aloud and um, it will type it out for you. I do caution if you are going to use this feature, please reread and check your response before you submit because as with any talk to type feature, it doesn't pick up what you say 100% accurately. So you may need to make some adjustments. And then this final um, icon here is a translator. So for example, um, you can set the language of your program to what language you want it translated to. Then you can highlight a word, and if you click on translator, it will translate it into the language you have set. So in a nutshell, that is how you can use read and write in order to have an assessment read aloud to you. I hope you find this helpful and I hope you can use this to um, support your test taking strategies while you are taking assessments during this time of remote learning. Thank you.